My name is Kirstie Dixon and I'm the planning director for Brunswick County and we are very excited that you are here. Um, there are many planning department and parks and rec staff here as well as our consultant team, um, McGill and Associates and Neon Planning. And we're gonna, I'm gonna get started and then I'll be passing over to the consultant team. This is kind of the agenda for this presentation. It will not be long. You'll have lots of opportunity for questions and you'll be able to go and participate in the activities next door. So first, what is comprehensive planning, a comprehensive land use plan? Because we're here to talk about a parks and rec master plan and a comprehensive land use plan. And most people understand what a parks and rec master plan is, you know, what parks will be coming in the future, what facilities, but not everybody is fully aware of what a comprehensive land use plan is. The first thing is it's a marketing and communication tool. First to the development community on where we want commercial activities and industrial activities and residential and higher intensity. It is also tells us where we need jobs at and housing for jobs, as well as that collaboration with <coughs> partners, even environmental partners. It is an investment tool for um, the private and public sector, it helps the county and as well as the nearby towns and the towns that are participating in this process um, figure out where they should make investments at and where they should not. It is a growth management tool. It helps with our development approvals and guides to our planning boards and our board commissioners on approving development and rezoning. It helps guide our zoning regulations and what our ordinances and regulations and codes say. And it also ensures that services and infrastructure are in place to support where growth is happening and not support it where there isn't infrastructure in place. It is a policy guide for services, for infrastructure, for amenities, for parks, recreation, programming, um, transportation, conservation, as well as it identifies lots of opportunities that our community has. Brunswick County is a really great place with lots of great scenic view sheds and lots of great opportunities. It also identifies challenges as well and how to deal with them. For example, growth. You know, how do you mitigate some of the impacts of growth? And lastly, it helps with funding. It helps guide the commissioners with the CIP and funding major projects. It helps grant applications and private, private development. Several times a week, we have a developer come in our office and say, hey, I'm gonna locate this business somewhere in Brunswick County. Where should I locate it? And that helps guide where they should locate that business. So it's not a legal binding document, though. It's not like a zoning ordinance. It's not A, B, and C, you have to do this. I own some property and I have to do this. It is a guide to, for the county, for staff, and for the elected officials and administration to guide where they should go. Sometimes they'll find out that maybe that specific route doesn't work for Brunswick County after investigating a little bit more and they'll, they'll have to go, you know, two steps over and do a little bit different route. It is collaboration with um, our transportation plan. It's collaborative with our transportation plan and our water and sewer master plans that are in process. It is also required by North Carolina CAMA statutes as well as by 160D in the North Carolina Journal Statute. So we're required to do a comprehensive language plan, but they don't tell us what it has to say, just that the elements have to be met. Um, but it's a guide for the future of Brunswick County. It will have an action plan and an implementation plan to help in the future. And now I'm going to turn it over to Meg Neal. Great. Thanks, Kirsty. Good evening, I'm Meg Neal with Neon Planning. I'm one of the firms making up the consultant team um, for this comprehensive planning project. So pleased to see all of you out this evening. If you have been with us since the beginning of the process, you know we were actually doing two projects in one. And so you can see from this diagram, looking at the comprehensive land use plan and a parks and recreation master plan together, that linkage is in the element of parks and recreation being addressed um, very generally in the land use plan and then we have the benefit of digging into the details with a, a master plan for um, <coughs> parks and recreation as well so that link has been made here so those those two are um, working together in concert so the draft plan some of the, some of you may have seen the uh, the review draft that's online that is coming together the table of contents will ultimately walk you through the series of sections that you have links to, those being 
um, a little explanation that Kiersey just touched on why we have a plan, what purpose it serves is in that first section. Brunswick today is that snapshot of what are the things going on in the county at this point in time that is informing our decisions about what we expect in the future, what we'd like to see happen in the future when we look 20 years out. Um, what are the kinds of things that you're concerned about today that this plan needed to address? The vision is exactly what your expectations are. They may be aspirational, some of the things that when you think 20 years out, what's Brendan County gonna be like? What are the things that we're gonna protect? What are the things that we're gonna look for? What are the things that we wanna attract to this county? How is it gonna shift and change over time? And how do we, how do we make sure that happens to, um, to meet our expectations? And so chapter four is about realizing the vision. It is those recommendations and strategies that go along with the goals that are also expressed in the plan, the goals for the future, those strategies are in there to lay out some ideas for what are those next steps. They may be near term, they may be long term, but over time to be able to get to this, this future county condition that this community says, this is right for Brunswick County. This is what I expect as a resident property owner, business owner here. So those chapter four is devoted to those strategies five touches on what Kirsty was talking about and that is the, the moving forward what, what do we do first the plans adopted now what so there's some instructions there on implementation we added a sixth section because some of the municipalities chose to have plans embedded into this county comprehensive plan so that section six has brief plans for each of those participating municipalities and then, of course, we will have a section seven, which is the appendices. So with that, we want to give you, use this presentation to kind of just give you a, um, a taste of some of the things that you're seeing in the plan. One of them, you see it, uh, an explanation of the process, but we use this diagram just to simply put into um, a quick at a glance guide, what exactly is the process and how does that, how does that affect the components of the plan? So, like I said, the organization, the decision to control your own destiny, so that's an expression there. So we, we initiated the process and went through that period of discovery and then followed with that creation of that vision looking down the road. This is a pretty important piece, that toolkit. That's not to say everything that happens in there is something the county should do. Some of those things in there, the partners of the county can participate in, and that's private and public sector, but that's a, a, a a set of strategies to get to that future condition, some of which you may not embark on, but there may be some things that are really important that become those high priority items. So throughout the process, we've had a number of ways that the community can be engaged. So we'd just like to summarize quickly, and there's more in the plan about the activities that took place. We had more than 4,000 people participate in the process, which for a county, uh, even of this size, is a pretty high number. I don't know that we've seen numbers like that anywhere else, right, Jim? So uh, the participation, of course, we were wrestling with um, the restrictions with um, COVID-19, so we had to overcome that. But even with that, we still had a lot of folks participating through focus groups, over 100 people through that to give us insights on some very specific and, and in some ways technical data. Um, we had uh, community meetings, we had meetings with municipal representatives, the managers, planning directors, and so on. Um, we even had an art contest. <coughs> and so involved, involving the younger members of the, of the population here in an art con contest to express what they'd like to see in the future was a lot of fun. So you'll see some of their artwork throughout the process. But our online tools really helped us get even more people engaged with online surveys and virtual meetings. So, that's part of the reason we had such a good turnout in this process. The vision section has this future land use and conservation map, and we emphasize the conservation piece because you do have a lot of wonderful cultural and natural assets in this community that contribute to the identity of the place. But change is coming, and so the, through expressing your expectations for the future, where development lands in and around these assets that you want to protect over the long term was an important question to answer. So everything that you see in a lot of the colors, the municipalities are represented in pink, by the way. The conservation areas are the areas that are less likely to be subject to development because there are environmental constraints. You don't have infrastructure in those places and so on. Um, you won't see a lot of changes in those places. 
But one of the things that came out of this process is, if that growth is coming, let's put it in places where it should logically be and make sure that from a county resource perspective, we're doing a good job with the, with the allocation of resources. So you'll see a little bit more about that, but we arrived at a set of what we call place types. It's more than land use, it's about the character of the place too. It might have to do with circulation, open space, um, how buildings relate to one another um, are expressed in those descriptions. So this is that graphic depiction of that future development pattern that aligns with the goals that are expressed in the plan. Um, you can see those place types in the next room, but they are generally organized according to really four categories if you don't count municipalities. So it's the conservation and recreation areas, it's the areas where people live, it's the commerce areas where people shop, dine, and so on, and of course where your job concentrations are. And then the other part. Right. Jim. I might not need that. Uh, yeah, that's right. Parks and Rec was a big part of this process. Okay, so we're polling the community, finding out, you know, what your vision is for the future. What are the, the expectations? We know we're growing. We know our parks are very popular. How do we improve those existing parks? How many new parks do we need? Where do they need to go? How do we need the staff for the future? That was a major part. We relied on community input, staff input. The survey was huge. Uh, the focus group meetings were integral in coming up with the decisions that ultimately led to the parks for there, which again is that guide. It's not a set of, this is exactly what we're going to do, but what do we need to do? What should be considered making decisions into the future? So the next few slides are just to give you a little taste of some of the things that you'll see in section four as recommendations and supporting strategies. All of these that you see are in more detail than the entire set is on display in the next room. So this is just to hit some of the highlights to give you a sense of what all this means. So when you see a major recommendation like this, um, it's in response to one or more of the goals that's stated in the plan. So if we know that um, there's a certain expectation about people want to be able to shop and dine and work in this community, that not all those trips should leave Brunswick County. So when we think about that and where it lands, of course, those concentrations need to be where you have available infrastructure. So there's a recommendation about having some of that development concentrated in places where it can be supported. And so some of those strategies are about facilitating mixed use in those places where you've got ability to, to, con to have different types of complementary uses within walking and biking and distance. It makes it easier for the county to deliver services in places like that, like a center like this. Um, and discouraging the strip development. So we hear a lot about traffic concerns, congestion on your roads, and so on. So when you have development stripped out along all of your major highways, it adds trips to the roads and exacerbates that problem. So this is one of those ideas to find those places to concentrate it where you don't have to have development spilling out on all of the lanes of all of your <coughs> corridors. Another one is related to natural resources. We've heard through the process, you know, this county's so green, we've got a lot of wonderful green resources and assets here in the, in the county. We'd love to see those preserved even as development continues. So one of the things that you can do as a county is look for more in the way of requirements for open space. So development's gonna continue, but does it need to continue and lose all the open space? It can be an integral part of future development and actually an amenity. So um, thinking about revisions to your regulatory framework, you can look for ways to make sure that open space is set aside and, and integrated in a meaningful way. Conservation design is one of those things that you'll see in a slide or two. Um, and then investigating options for, um, for protection um, that open space. So, uh, for, I'm sorry, for the trees. So there are mechanisms that can be used right now. The county does not have the legislation in place to do that, but can seek it so that tree protection becomes a more regular activity. So we've heard that through the process, and so within the recommendations, we have some details about how and what to require and what are the mechanisms for, for doing that, whether it's, it's open space within your new neighborhoods or tree protection or both. So when I mentioned conservation design, this is an example of that such, that such thing. So you take a parcel of land that wants to be developed for residential or even a mix, um, but the decision 
to set aside more open space needs to be just as easy as doing the conventional subdivisions that you see all the time. So a lot of times you see that conventional design because it's the easier path to take. With changes to your regulatory framework, you can actually set it up where those choices are just as easy and the open space that gets set aside actually achieve some of your open space objectives. So the goals around natural resources and so on can be achieved through that. The key here is it's not trying to say one's bad and one's good, but both of them are options. Both of them accommodate the exact same number of units. You're just trying to give another choice within your policy <coughs> framework to say, this is something we could do, and if we do it, we may actually be more sensitive to the natural and cultural assets that we love so much. Uh, a little bit more under natural resources that also relates to the public access goal and the recommendations related to it. Um, being able to uh, facilitate the creation of um, a green and blue network, we call it. So this is something that is a little bit more than the Parks and Recreation Master Plan that Jim was just speaking about. When you think about all of these things coming together in that entire network, it does more than just deliver recreation. You can be thinking about things that are wild, good for the wildlife, good for your um, uh, for your water quality, things of that nature, but also can enhance the experience of the visitors and the residents. So when you think about creating a system like that, then you have real meaning when you say to a developer, we want you to set aside open space within the development that's meaningful. The question is, well, what is that? This level of thinking and take it up a notch and say, this is the kind of open space that the community values. So when you set it aside, maybe you get more points for achieving that. And you end up with a connected system. So it's not just a bunch of fragmented open space, but from one piece to the next, it starts to knit together. This is something that we did as just a first starting point to say, what if you did that? This is conceptually, what could those pieces consist of that become part of that system, and you can tell from the images here that maybe there are multiple purposes to all those spaces that become part of the system. Um, Davidson County in Tennessee did something like this, and they too recognize that there's value not just in the green space of the land, but also the waterways, which here too would also be part of that. So that network of your blue ways, your water bodies, should also be counted. So when you think about those together, you're really getting a lot more benefit. Back to Parks and Rec. So like we spoke about before, there was a big community input, you know, session. Uh, we got a lot of information to help guide the county, but it ultimately led to recommendations. And those recommendations, while I mentioned before, aren't hard and fast. They're important, right? So we're looking at a 10-year period and beyond with the Parks and Rec plan. What we overwhelmingly heard was, we love our parks. We want to see them improve. And so it was about, what are the improvements that need to be made? You know, what's outdated, what needs to be updated, where do we need to expand existing facilities? Where are new parks going to be? The plan makes a number of recommendations for new community and district parks throughout the county. We did a gap analysis to figure out where is the future development coming, where do parks need to be placed. While the plan doesn't say that's the parcel that you have to buy to make that park happen, it does give you what's called service area circle, which means somewhere in this area will be within proximity of a population that could benefit from that park. It also considers the costs, it considers staffing, and makes staffing recommendations as well. Stormwater, I know a very popular <laughs> subject as in most infrastructure, so I'll get up here for some folks, some of those items. Uh, stormwater, obviously, as, as the county, uh, increases not only in population but in impervious area coverage built upon area around the county stormwater runoff is is an important thing for us all not only the management and the flow of that for flood, flooding reasons but also in the treatment of it for environmental reasons so in the uh, in the next room as as, as you've heard you'll see uh, more details of these items uh, uh, how how the intent is not only to address the flooding but also to address the, uh, the water quality, and it's in line with some recent recommendations by Brunswick County's uh, stormwater staff as well, department regarding uh, the implementation of 25 year design storms and even up to 100 year design storm events in flood prone areas. 
uh, even to the extent of mapping out uh, in GIS flood prone areas that are known whether they're existing on, on flood mapping or not. So there's additional recommendations and, and guidance given uh, next door to help with this. Awareness, uh, education, those things that are related to uh, making sure other folks know, even on their small residential parcels, what they may be able to do to impact. Even when they're covered under a, a state-managed stormwater plan, there are things on, on private properties that can be done to help from, from cleaning ditches and thoroughfares that are on private property that, that don't allow water to flow, flow effectively to individual <coughs> treatment systems on private land. Infrastructure traffic. Uh, folks, folks see it uh, readily. If you if you stay out of Brunswick County and come back a month later, it seems like it's it's increased. We all know it's an issue. It's not it's not isolated to county jurisdictions, municipalities. Uh, the connections we have with New Hanover and Horry County, obviously, uh, to, to to those directions, those transportation corridors coming in. You're aware of some of the plans, obviously, with uh, Carolina Bay Parkway to the south. You've seen what's happened with the I-140 and the other plans to to the north. And, and all in between. So there, you will see some recommendations based on these, not only the comprehensive uh, transportation plan that's an ongoing effort, and I know I see some faces in here with some folks that are intimately involved in some of the transportation organizations and planning and correspondence with those. Uh, that, that is a, a need for, for continuation as well as independent uh, consideration or collaboration uh, even even in the planning groups, planning departments. The DOT has their master plan, they have their 10 year and multi year plans. We see those change as, as the, uh, the economies change and their ability to fund those projects. But internally with Brunswick County municipalities, the planning folks see and observe things through, uh, through their reviews where they need corridor planning studies and other things. So increased efforts independently in the smaller planning organizations you will see uh, some emphasis on that. Uh, you heard about infrastructure uh, in some of Meg's uh, discussions, making sure not only with the transportation corridors, but also in water and sewer corridors, that populations are best served where not only we have current infrastructure, where we have park facilities, where we have senior facilities, those nodes where the county already has investment to take advantage of those investments as they are in the ground, and also to uh, coincide with future investments in utility the counties currently underway with its, with its water and sewer master planning efforts. I think they're intended to be uh, wrapping up in the springtime. We corresponded with them during this process as well. But the intent is to align the infrastructure, obviously, and the roadway being part of that, with the uh, land use plan side of it so that you, you have those corresponding effectively. We heard from uh, many individuals and groups how important housing is going forward. We know that real estate values are going up a lot <coughs> compared to the rest of the state and even in the United States. So there is, um, a, a, it's on people's minds. What do we do about housing? How do we not only think about price points, but also for folks who have been here all their lives or have moved here, the idea of moving away just doesn't set well with them. So the idea of being able to have different choices as you age in place, you go through your chapters of life, what are the different <coughs> housing needs people have along the way, shouldn't have to leave Brunswick County to find that product that suits their stage of life. So um, we have a pretty extensive section on housing recommendations, housing policy, and, and supporting ideas around that. A lot of it has to do with the housing supply, and the range of product types. So again, back to that theme of choice, being able to create choices right here in Brunswick County so people can find the types of um, housing that suits their lifestyle um, and, uh, and their budgets and so on. Amending the local regulations starts to build into um, your codes the flexibility that's needed to allow for some of the new products to come online with new development. So, there's that uh, suggestion in there, so we encourage you to look at look at those types of things under housing to try to expand the choices here in Brunswick County as development continues. And then finally, development quality is a big one. So people are saying to us, you know, this change is coming, how do we make sure it's good? How do we make sure that all the changes here are in keeping with um, you know, what, we've, what we'd like to see um, and, uh, and not let it drop off? So, 
there are, again, when you look to your regulatory framework, there are ways to raise that bar and say, if this is going to happen anyway, let's make sure it's a benefit to the whole community that, that I mean, there, there are limitations in North Carolina in our statutes about what you can control design-wise, but there are some things that can alleviate, for example, the traffic pressure. So even just design standards around <coughs> connectivity within new development and how it connects to uh, exist, your existing group network. Those kinds of things can be addressed, the, the open space set asides, just site design so that you get better relationships between buildings and over time how it all fits together as development continues should be more positive relationships. So that section is devoted to raising the bar for all future development coming into the town. Um, so that just gives you a little taste of the kinds of things that are in a fairly lengthy section of recommendations, policy ideas that are in the um, draft plan. Our next steps are to hear from all of you this evening, and of course, as people review it on on the website and, um, and give us their feedback that way. We'll take all of that in, look for the kinds of things that need to be refined, maybe it's clarification, maybe it's an idea that's not as well thought out that could be with the input we hear from all of you. Um, and then we will move into the adoption process, those final plan documents that will then be transferred to the county and we will see the uh, CAMA certification. So we're looking towards wrapping this up at the end of the year and um, we'll look to staff to to guide us through that. But tonight we want to know what's on your mind. So this is the fun part. So with this introduction to what uh, you're hopefully seeing online and then the printed material in the next room, we would love to get your feedback. So as I said before, the policy recommendations and the strategies under them are fairly lengthy. You have the handout that lists out the major recommendations which are also posted on the posters on the easels in the next room. Underneath those are enlargements of the pages of section four, so you can see a bit more about the recommendations and specific strategies. What we would like to have you do this evening, you have a strip of coins that are representing your tax dollars. So on average, you're close to, the average person pays $1,000 in annual property taxes for Carson County. So if you think of each of those coins as roughly $200, we would like you to tell us where you think your tax do dollars should go. So there are sticker boards in the main hallway out here that we're going to create bar charts out of as you guys put your stickers on. You can use more than one sticker on a single recommendation. If something is so important to you and you want to put all five in that column, go ahead. But what that conveys to us is what are the things that are so important to you that you'd like to see tax, tax dollars funneled in that direction? And that's something we can communicate back to county leaders and be able to say, this is something that's a priority for the folks who attended the meeting and, and so on. So we can, we can um, isolate that. So again, nothing changes overnight and nothing is 100% on the county's shoulders. But when they can see, when your county leaders can see, here are the things that people would like to see progress on sooner rather than later, then it helps with that prioritization of what should happen first. So. That is the conclusion. I think we're at the end of the, yep, we are. So with that, we will turn you loose to go into the next room and hopefully you will, um, there are people at all of the stations in the next room. So hopefully if you have any questions, feel free to ask. We also have ways of writing right on those posters if you have thoughts that you want to share with us on any specifics. And um, we, again, thank you so much for coming out this evening. Please, to see so much people and I'm really happy to hear from you tonight. Thank you. Thank you.